Sixth-ranked Ohio State, one win away from clinching the Big Ten East Division title in a return trip to the league championship game in Indianapolis. Mark has more in tonight's Buckeye Beat. It's been a league-wide renaissance at running back as the Big Ten already boasts 5,000-yard rushers with Ohio State's Ezekiel Elliott poised to join that group this weekend. We have it, and then you see that they're doing it against some of the top, top rush defenses in the you know, country. That's one thing I noticed about it. I was just looking at our conference rush defenses and who we've faced the last few weeks. They're very good against the rush. So we're just very good run defenses, and then you throw these big-time big backs in there. So there's, there's some NFL players in this league, you know, be carrying the ball. And Indiana's Tevin Coleman certainly fits the bill. I see his statistics are ridiculous. I met with our defensive staff again this morning, last night and this morning, and they think he's an outstanding, great back. Uh, uh, not real big, but fast, extremely fast. I have not studied him. That's usually Wednesday I do that. And, uh, but I know our guys are, that's the, that's the threat, number one threat on their team. Oh, that's a big challenge because uh, he's a good back. And, you know, last week I could say he put the team on his back and took over the game, especially with 300 some yards rushing. Um, it's it's kind of outrageous, but uh, you know all you can do is, like I said, is focus on our game plan and get ready to execute it. Due to injuries, IU's offense has been one-dimensional as the one-time fifth-string quarterback Xander Diamond is calling the shots. Right. I mean, it is tough to get a read because there's not really too much film on him, so you can't really study like the little tendencies that you may have. So like we're just going off of just uh, the whole offensive tendencies and trying to get a, a feel for that. Buckeyes are back in the playoff race, but Urban Meyer has no worries about his team looking past the lowly Hoosiers. They went out and they worked their tails off, you know, and uh, you know, J JT's a Heisman candidate that knows that he could have played much better Saturday. And that's the best thing about coaching these guys right now. I hope it doesn't change, you know, and that's something we're watching very closely with, you know, guys are starting to get some notoriety, you know, Zeke has a chance to get a thousand yards and the minute he becomes something other than Zeke Elliott, that's, that's a problem. And same with, uh, JT, same with Joey Bosa, some of these players are, you know, Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas didn't play particularly well, and so I, I watched him very closely yesterday, and it was nothing other than go out and I didn't play very well, I got to play better. And that's, that's what every coach wants to be around. And this team is like, I just got to make sure they don't change. Well, despite a domination in the series, Ohio State, Indiana, there's been some memorable matchups between the Buckeyes and Hoosiers, particularly in the last couple of years. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150. Our Buckeye insider joins us now, and certainly, Mike, last year, game in Columbus. Remember that snow in the second half? Two years ago in Bloomington, that wild comeback from the Hoosiers. That was the game that we saw Zach Bourne become a linebacker. And yep. even go back yep. to 2011, where we saw these two great freshman quarterbacks, Trey Roberson and Braxton Miller, go head-to-head, -head, and we thought to ourselves, we're going to be see the two, two of these guys doing it the next couple of years. Here we are, Trey Roberson, he is transferred to Illinois State. Braxton Miller's got his shoulder in a sling. Not quite how we thought it was going to work out a couple years ago. Yeah, it was a, a bit of a different trajectory for, for both IU and for Indiana, or for both IU and Ohio State. But what I thought was interesting at that time period was how Kevin Wilson was just getting settled in, and, and he had a, has a pretty good resume as an assistant in Oklahoma and other places. It was all about offense uh, for him. Unfortunately, for this season, it has disintegrated uh, for Indiana, primarily due to injuries. And, of course, Ohio State, their quarterback situation has, has also evolved. Braxton Miller has become really an all-time great who might be in jeopardy of losing his spot for next year. So it's amazing what the future holds. We just never know. Yeah, Hoosiers hanging their hats on a victory at Missouri earlier this season, but this is a much different Indiana team because of the quarterback situation. We mentioned Trey Roberson. He transferred over the summer. Cam Cuffman transferred over the summer. Indiana's in good shape. They had Nate Sudfeld coming back. Sudfeld separated his shoulder midseason, and his backup, Chris Covington, tore his ACL. So they're down to Xander Diamond as their quarterback. Coming into this year, they thought this kid was going to be the fifth string. Plan was to redshirt him. True freshman out of Los Angeles, California. And at times, unlike Ohio State's freshman, redshirt freshman JT Barrett, true freshman Xavier Dammit has looked like a true freshman. Right, and there is a big difference. You make that distinction wisely. Uh, a true freshman means you're just completely raw to campus. I don't know if Diamond even came in in January. It's almost irrelevant. He just hasn't been around. And that's kind of been an unspoken plus that JT Barrett, he's been around the program for a little bit, even though he is, a, is still technically a freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. But as a result, with the true freshman, just is not ready uh, to throw the ball with 
with any real coherence in major college football because it's so sophisticated with defenses and that sort of thing, and, and the Hoosiers have paid the price. 0-6 in the Big Ten. This is not a very good Indiana team. Why should Ohio State be concerned about the Hoosiers? Uh, I don't, not really, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. They're not concerned only because it's the next opponent and what's at stake for Ohio State. A chance to uh, clinch your bid in the Big Ten Championship and frankly for Ohio State just to get better because there isn't much time left on the season. It's almost now or never for Ohio State. Uh, that's why you're concerned about whoever you play. It's late November. Urban Meyer said they're not going to be concerned about style points. I think they need to be concerned about style points. If they only win by 28, I think they're in trouble. Your prediction for Saturday. I think you're absolutely right with that. But I think the style points will take care of themselves because, as Urban Meyer also says, we just take it series to series and try to do our best in each series. And the series are going to add up against the Indiana Hoosiers on Saturday. This is going to be almost a name your score. Uh, I think the Buckeyes will be somewhere in the 50s, and, and the Hoosiers uh, will be lucky to get out of the teens. I'll give you another score to name 21 and 1. That's Ohio State's record on a Stadium at Cake Day. And guess what this Saturday is? <laughs> All right. Stadium cake day as the uh, the crew down in uh, Logan County gets uh, all Logan, that. Logan, Ohio, yeah, actually. Yeah, from Logan, Ohio. Gets yeah. uh, the, the cake batters going. They've been busy all week long. So <laughs> if you're going to the game, stop by the South Lawn at St. John's. Check out the stadium cake. Make a donation. It's a great cause. They have endowed scholarships and give those away every year. Andy, back to you.